Well, we're on our way to the first club meet of the year for the Charleston Tesla Club, and uh, I think we're gonna have some fun. We're going to the Frothy Beard today. These are my microphones. Oh, that's fancy. Yeah. Oh, you're recording. I just started. <laughs> We're starting to stack up. We, we are. Two rows of Teslas here. Yeah, I don't know if you've seen them before or not. I have. Oh, okay. But a lot of people haven't. So these are the jump seats for the Tesla. Yep. They work so simply. They do. Yeah, I'll hold that for you. Thanks. <laughs> and so now you can seat seven people, five adults and two children. Exactly. They've even got a little space for their feet. Like so. And then just to get them down is also pretty easy. Watch this. There we go. And then that covers the floor up. And so when they're down, do you still have room to put like a, a small item under there or? Um, actually, there is a little bit of some room right in here. Yeah. But frequently the charge cord will slide underneath. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's underneath the seat and then on top you can put like a folder yeah. or something. Awesome. Thank you. And ta-da. <laughs> Oh, and then inside the trunk is a um, is a release, so that if the kids want to get out, they can. Exactly. Nobody's trapped. Nobody's trapped. And then underneath this bumper cover, he actually has two metal bumpers instead of one, like the regular Model S. So that way, it'll distribute the um, forces if there were a collision. It would distribute the forces out, not not into the rear seat, which is awesome. Right. Tesla says it's the safest spot in the car. Indeed. All right, thanks, Michael.
your, uh, really, it's like your dash cam? Huh? Is that your dash cam? Uh, that has like an image stabilizer kind of thing, doesn't it? I don't know what's there, sorry. <laughs> That's too cool. GoPro. GoPro. Yeah. You need to get a picture of all the tests that are going to be right. right <laughs> You check the photo already? Yeah. Where you're going? Oh, today we have uh, the people meeting in the Charleston Tesla Club around 18 cars. It's nice. Good afternoon. We're here at the club meet today for January. Hi. All right, I'm McKinley and this is my husband, Brian. Yep, so uh, we just got done driving cross country in our uh, Model 3. So we... Uh, Ended up going about 6,000 miles total or so. Um, we, uh, so we left Charleston, went up to Nashville, Kansas City, Denver, Denver Salt Lake, Tahoe, then down to Sacramento to see McKinley's family. Went down to the Bay Area, did Pebble Beach, uh, camped in Big Sur, um, all the way down the Pacific Coast Highway, ended up in San Diego, and then uh, from San Diego, we hauled butt back to we Charleston. We both had to be at work early Monday morning. So less than three days going from San Diego to Charleston. Yeah. It was Six, ambitious. 67 hours total. Including so. sleep. Yes. <laughs> so we, uh, we car camped for a lot of the trip. So we went to uh, REI. We got one of the inflatable um, memory foam mattresses. And uh, we fold the back seats down in the, in the Model 3 and uh fit us both pretty good so it worked out it worked out awesome you can leave the uh the climate control on of course so you wake yeah. up wake up with a full battery and ready to go and you have a view of the stars at night which was way better than any hotel we could have stayed at yeah yeah it's definitely glamping for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah the climate control is is definitely clutch i'll never sleep in a tent again yeah yeah we have a nice sixty thousand dollar tent here at the, with our with our model three <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah it was an awesome awesome car for a road trip though and then having the autopilot on it's unbelievable how much of a difference that makes just for how you feel at the end of the day like in my uh in my old bmw 
We, I think I drove eight hours once, and like at the end, I was like, oh my God, that was terrible, felt exhausted. And we were knocking out 12 hour days, 16 hour days driving, and kind of just hop out and was like, okay, whatever. Um, so it's really interesting to see how much of a difference the autopilot makes, just how you feel mentally, like you're just not, not wore out since you can be a little bit less engaged uh, while it's driving. Yeah. But yeah, it was, a, it was an awesome road trip car for sure. Definitely. And did you use the nav on autopilot feature too? He oh did. yeah. Yeah. I'm a yeah, control she, freak. Yeah, <laughs> she, she didn't trust it as much, but I was, I had it on navigate on autopilot pretty much the whole time we were driving. Yeah, so you just use the um, regular autopilot? So can I also say a confession on his side, he also had it on the Pacific Coast Highway where it's like these hairpin turns at 30 miles per hour and it's, you know, a thousand foot drop off into the ocean and he has it on autopilot and he's sitting back going like, oh, it's fine. Like at least put your hands on the wheel the whole time, jeez. Yeah. I, That's only the way I would do it. I did have my hands on the wheel on the, the dicey turns. It was just when we were going like 10 that I took them off on the, <laughs> on the hairpins, but yeah. It did work great. We didn't die, so. The yeah. car it performed flawlessly. Um, my nerves, maybe not so much, but yeah. maybe next time I'll know that it's flawless and I won't be as scared. <laughs> <laughs> so with yours, did um, when you when you take over for autopilot, does it stay at that speed limit that the speed it was at, or does yours stay at the set speed? It depends on the speed limit that the car um, recognizes. Yeah, so like for instance, yeah, with ours, so. like you being a 70 mile zone and then somebody slows down in front of you, it's like 50, and oh, then you yeah. take the wheel, it stays at 50. I'm like, I don't know when this behavior started. I think it was like the last two updates. Oh, I don't know. Because usually when oh, I would turn it off, I would hit the brake, I think. Oh, okay. So you already want it to slow down anyway. I think yeah. so. Okay. But yeah. I don't know. It seemed to adapt pretty well. I. Honestly, the the adaptive cruise control part was the best part. That's something that I used exclusively, yeah. especially in the stop and go traffic where it speeds up and slows down. I think that worked better than any other feature. Yeah. yeah, that was just, yeah, that's how you always did it. I would let it just completely do autopilot. You would just do the cruise. I like to be in control. <laughs> <laughs> so um, show us the map and show, tell us about the stops. Were, like, were they all superchargers or were there some level twos? Or Yeah, so yeah, we would we would mostly stop um, stop at superchargers uh, along the way. When we would car camp, we would do that um, at night. So we would stay at like RV parks. Uh, so we had showers and bathrooms and amenities. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So get out in the morning, take a quick shower. We still wake up with a full battery. So, you know, at, six six hours or so sleeping not bad so um, that was the uh just use the rv plug with the with the regular adapter yeah oh. yeah yeah just the nema 1450 plug just like as if we were at home exactly. yeah 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 and that that worked out perfect yeah. um and then anytime we would stop in the city to see friends uh we would just pull up plug share find a uh find a spot to you know get a couple hours of charge like in in monterey i remember we uh just got on plug share found a public garage Walked around, did some shopping, had dinner for, and then three hours, you know, had an extra 90 miles or so. Well, yep. even at friends' houses, like especially in their garages, that if that had a 220 volt or even a regular 110, it yep. was great to add a couple of miles. So a little night. bit so you don't have to stop so long at the supercharger yeah. or yeah. regular station. And then you showed us in the pictures, you showed us the, um, your, your, your rear shelf actually was yeah. pretty helpful oh, yeah. when you were doing the camping. Yeah, it's great. You can put your glasses down there. If you have a glass of wine, you can put down there. We watched a movie one night on Brian's laptop. Yeah. Um, the shelf was actually very convenient. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't think they designed it to be a shelf. I don't know, but either way, it turned out to be a great shelf. So yeah. Definitely a good function that they maybe accidentally built in there. <laughs> All right, so let's switch gears and let's tell us about your story of actually getting your Model 3. Yeah. Oh man, so I remember uh, the the first night that they were making reservations available, I was sitting in the kitchen, just hitting refresh on the webpage, just yeah. waiting to, to be able to put our reservation in. Um, well, so we, but let's quick rewind. I remember actually our very first date, when we very first met, Brian said, Tesla one day is gonna be making this car that's not a hundred grand, and I'm gonna be a first day reservation holder. So fast forward all those years later, and yeah, we were a first day reservation holder. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> so you did that night, six, April 1st, ago, Elon's right? talking, and you're, here's the credit card. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yep, yeah, so we uh, put our reservation in, and then I was actually holding out for the uh, for the smaller battery. I wanted to uh, try to get the get the price down lower, but once uh, October got here, 
Um, we're like, yeah, end of the year's coming. That tax, federal tax credit's going away. So, all right, like Elon, you got me, man. I'm, I'm splurging for the big battery. I want to, don't want to miss the tax credit. So we. Uh, but I'm glad we got the bigger battery because yeah. honestly, it makes a difference. Yeah, we would not have done the cross country trip if right. we if we only had the 220 mile battery. I don't think. Yeah. So, and so this one is two wheel drive, right? Uh, yeah. 310 yeah. miles ish. Yeah. Our range is 310 miles, and we do have the rear wheel drive only, not not the all wheel drive. Right? Indeed. And this color, some people might not have seen this color. Well, tell me more about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. So this is. Uh, so we got the silver. This is uh, got discontinued before we bought it, but uh, we weren't able to email and wine more or less. Yeah. And then they uh, they still ended up getting getting us the silver silver model three. Um, we did have to wait a little bit longer. Uh, I think we ended up waiting an extra three weeks or so to get the silver. Totally but worth it. it's yeah. uh, think definitely worth it. I love same it. Same way. So. We had to we put our order in, and everybody who ordered a normal color theirs got done weeks yeah. before ours and then right. all of a sudden ours went down the line i was like what is this right right <laughs> so yeah so we ended up waiting i think maybe five weeks five Total. or six weeks mm -hmm. from from when we put our uh, officially put the order in that's not so bad actually, did you have to did, were you in that group that had to pay extra for the color or you just paid the regular price for the color uh we yeah we had to pay two grand extra for the silver because uh, it was in that last batch that was allowed out yeah, it, I think black was the only color that was included. Right, um, and then we could have yeah. paid fifteen hundred for white, I think, and then two mm -hmm. grand for silver. Right. So what I, I, I think what they did was they, right before they canceled it, they said, "Hey, last chance, but you got to pay for this privilege if you want. Yeah. If you want the color you want, you yeah. the obsidian black or the, um, what do they call it, Arctic silver or just silver." What is, I don't remember. Uh, actually. I'll look it up. <laughs> I think it's metallic. Silver metallic, metallic? Silver, yeah, yeah. Metallic silver, Maybe. silver metallic. I'm not like sure. That. Yeah. But it's definitely worth it. You don't have to wash it as often. Exactly. That's what I love about my, my, my last silver car. Yeah, all right, my, so, car is, my other car is white, and you have to wash it all the time. A lot more, yeah. So yeah. I see that you went with the aerodynamic wheels. Is there um, Was there any discussion back and forth on that, or sport wheels, or, we or is did, it just... Yes. We did talk about Actually, that. That was, I think, the first decision that we had. Yeah. Um, one of Brian's friends and former co-workers um, had an S first and then a 3, and um, talked about the upgrade on the wheels and even taking the cover off. And to be perfectly honest, I think we both actually like the look of the aerodynamic, aerodynamic better. And I mean, it's better for the range also. So it's kind of win-win. Yeah, I think we had read that you get 4 to 7% bet more range with, by having the covers on. So, and it you looks know, cool. definitely made, I'm sure that made a difference on our, uh, on our cross country trip. So yeah, and oh, something I didn't say, for our cross country trip, it only cost us two hundred and fifteen dollars. Round trip, round all trip. All the way from Charleston, up north, all the way down California and back was only two hundred and fifteen bucks. So That's we, what six thousand miles. Yeah, yeah, yeah about six thousand miles. Yeah, and so we had added that up at one point, and we it looked like it would be about a thousand bucks in gas. With a, a little over getting, a thousand in my Mercedes. Which oh my goodness! It's about thirty miles per gallon. Yeah. So and that's pretty fuel efficient very too. Very oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, very so different. It was amazing the cost savings on that too. And that included your your stays at the campgrounds, right? Oh, we that didn't did not. That, up. that did not include the stays at the, the campgrounds. Campground that was like thirty bucks a night. It wasn't. But the but the charging there was free, right? Yes. yes. Okay, yeah. so that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So you would have stayed at a hotel if you didn't stay. Yeah, we would right. have stayed yeah. at a hotel for two hundred dollars yeah. versus thirty dollars a night for a campground, and the yeah. campground gives us free charging. Or at a friend's house, yes. we got some free charging from them. Gave them a bottle of wine in exchange. It worked. Yeah. <laughs> Just chill out for the night. Why not? Yeah, definitely. Anything you want to tell everybody about uh, Model 3 ownership, Tesla ownership? Uh, we love it. You'll never look back. Yeah, you'll never, you'll never own a gas car ever again if you have one of these. I mean, they they drive so much better. They're cool. It's more affordable. There's no maintenance. They're better. They're just, they're better in every way. There is no, you're not making any trade-offs. Yeah, it's a little bit more up front, but if you're looking at the three to five year ownership cost, it's, there's no comparison so much cheaper and you have a lot more fun driving in the meantime <laughs> <laughs> yeah so um the next question then would be um have you guys had mobile service oh not yet no we haven't no. we haven't had a need for it okay. car hasn't really had any issues and have you had any service like at the at the, the service center no no it's pretty it takes care of itself <laughs> it does and, and how, many, how many miles does it have now 6, i think seven no i think it's a ten thousand now 
Is it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Ten thousand miles. Quite a bit. Zero zero hassle. I like it. Yeah. Yeah, I can't tell any difference. No, not at all. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Charleston Tesla Club rules! <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Remember to subscribe and comment down below. Uh, we'll all be looking at your comments and uh, we'll let you know uh, any, any answers to any questions you might have. Thanks for watching.